good to be back in God's house one more time. I'll tell you, it's, uh, uh, I could leave, uh, like Bernard said a while ago, before we even pray, uh, I could leave right then. And it's been good to be here. It's just a, a good place to be tonight. I appreciate uh, each one that's come out. I appreciate my preaching brothers. I, I've got three sitting back here tonight, and I love every one of them. Amen. Uh, you've all been a blessing to me and been a help to me at some point uh, in my life, whether you realize it or not. You was an encouragement at some point and a help. Uh, that's what it's all about, helping right. one another, right. And right. encouraging one another, and, and just working together. Uh, we're all working for the same thing anyway. Right. We're supposed to be. Uh, I've got some scripture tonight I want to read to you. Uh, and I'll tell you, I... I'm nervous as a, a cat in a room full of rocking chairs tonight. I just I want to mind the Lord. I want to follow Him and just do and say what He'd have me to say. But I want to start tonight in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 37. I'm going to read one verse there, and then I'm wanting to go to. I'm going to read three or four different places, a verse in, in three or four different chapters here, and I just want to mind the Lord tonight. That's a, that's my heart's desire. Uh, uh, to just get myself out of the way and to follow the Lord. But Isaiah chapter number 37, uh, I want to read verse number 3. Very familiar scripture. Every scripture I read tonight uh, is going to be familiar. At uh, some point you've heard it or, or read it or something, some more in your life. Uh, but you pay close attention to this tonight. Isaiah uh, 37, 3. And they said to him, uh, Thus saith Hezekiah, This is the day of trouble and of rebuke and a blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Then I'm going to go to uh, Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 8. And I, I thought about this as, as Vernon was talking uh, how, when we were at, at all the prior. But verse number 8 is chapter 66. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Then I want to go to Jeremiah uh, chapter number 8, verse number 20. And read it. It says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. And I thought about today, I've studied all day long, and these three scriptures uh, just keep coming to my heart. And I, I can't get away from it tonight, and I, I'm just going to mind the Lord. Uh, but I got to thinking about what he said, what Jeremiah was saying. Uh, we look, the harvest is past, summer's ended, and we're not saved. And I thought about today, Brother Howdy. Uh, we go to the house of God time and time again. Uh, most folks go for uh, three times a week. At least they'll go to three times a week. And then, uh, Brother, we've got lost people that'll come into the house of God and they'll uh, come in looking, yeah. searching for something, and then, uh, brother, they'll go right back out of the church and they're lost as they was when they came in. Yeah. And I want to tell you today that when that happens, there's something wrong. Amen. Amen. There's Amen. something wrong. Amen. If a lost person can uh, come and sit under the gospel yes. and, and yes. sit under the songs of Zion and uh, sit under the preached word of God and, and then walk right back out in the same condition, yes. there is something wrong. Yes. And brother, I can't look at nobody else. I can't look yes. at, at anybody here, but I've got to look at myself yes. and I've got to examine a rocky ball when that happens. I thought that uh, this morning I was preaching this thought uh, come to my mind we all know the story of when uh, Philip was in a great revival and brother uh, there was people getting saved left and right uh, people was getting born again uh, but the spirit of God uh, spoke to him and said go out there to the desert uh, which is Gaza and brother I'll tell you a lot of us preachers today uh, that would have been hard to do uh, leave a crowd like that uh, leave a movement of the spirit like that uh, brother to go and meet with one man uh, some miles away. But brother, I'll tell you, immediately he minded the Spirit of God. Immediately he took after what the Lord had told him to do. He got down there, brother, I'll tell you, he saw uh, one man, a uh, Ethiopian eunuch. He was sitting there reading the Bible, uh, reading the Scriptures, trying to figure it out. And brother, I feel a walked up to him, and he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And are you listening to this? I told back to tell this right here, brother. Uh, uh, he said, how can I except some man should guide me? It's a crying shame tonight. Uh, when lost people will come to the house of God and leave not knowing how to be born again. Amen. Uh, that's the most 
most important thing. I say it just about every service. I wonder how many people tonight have already died and lifted their eyes in a devil's hell. Amen. Amen. I wonder how many people tonight. I'm going to take that even farther away. I wonder how many people tonight have darkened these doors, walked in here, yeah. sat down, went through the motion, yeah. went through the service, brother, and then died and lifted their eyes yeah. in the devil's hell, brother. But when that happens, there's something wrong, Jeremiah yeah. said. Uh, the harvest is past, the summer's ended. Uh, we are not saved. Yeah. Uh, brother, I'll tell you what, we go back. Uh, I'm going to tell you how uh, that happens tonight. Uh, there's reason uh, that that happens tonight. Uh, we can go back to that first verse that I, I read to you in, in Isaiah 37. He said that then said, Thus saith Hezekiah, uh, this is a day of trouble yeah. and a rebuke yeah. and a blasphemy. Brother, I'll tell you, uh, when that happens, that's what that is. Yeah. And he said, For the children are come uh, to the birth, and there's not strength yeah. to bring forth, brother, yeah. so many times, yeah. but there's not enough strength yeah. in the house of God to bring forth. Yeah. Oh, how sad that yeah. is. Uh, tonight, brother, when we've got men of God and we've got women of God uh, that can't pray through and uh, that can't get a hold of the Lord. Yeah. Hey. Oh, somebody that's hey. Hey. There's not strength. There's no strength, but I'll tell you how do you get strength tonight. I'm going to go somewhere else in just a few minutes. Uh, I'll just quote it to you, brother. Uh, the Bible said uh, there was a famine in the land. Uh, I think it's after uh, chapter 8, verse 8, I believe it was. He said, there's a famine in the land, not for bread, but not for water, uh, but by hearing of the word of God. Today, I'll tell you, this is where uh, we get our strength tonight. I'm a good singer. I could have sat here and listened to the uh, good singing all night. I could have listened to the good testimony. And I, I was feeling the good spirit of God. Yes. But brother, that's not uh, where we get our strength at tonight. We get our strength from God's Word. And I'll tell you what. I've been guilty of it myself. And I don't know if any of you other preachers have or not, brother. Uh, but instead of uh, feeding the meat, I tried to feed the milk at some time. We can't get the strength uh, when we're just a baby in Christ. Uh, but we can get strength from that meal. Uh, but as we grow and we grow yeah. in the grace and the yeah. knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we need to get on the meat yeah. of the Word of God. That's what's going to help us. Yeah. That's what's going to make me a better preacher. Yeah. That's what's going to make you a better Christian. Yeah. That's what's going to make you uh, do your job that, that God's given you to do. That's what's going to strengthen you tonight. Amen. The Bible said, Paul said that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen. 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 Uh, brother, I'm telling you tonight, I'm thankful uh, for the Word of God. And I, I know Amen. this tonight. Uh, these three preachers that's here with me, I've heard every one of them preach, and I, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. And they preach the Word of God. And I tell you, we can preach it until we're blue in the face. Right. And if you don't uh, take heed to it, uh, we can take it in here, uh, let it go in here, and let it go out there. And it ain't going to do you a bit of good. Amen. It ain't going to do me a bit of good. We need the strength of the Word of God. Amen. I thought, brother, when Elijah was sitting out there, and I'll tell you, he was having him a pity party. Yes. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord, and I'm just using my words tonight, Amen. come by, give you a little something to eat. And he said, go with the strength of this. And I'm just using my words. Yeah. I'll tell you, bro, this is where my strength is. Yeah. You know what gets me by from yeah. midweek till Sunday? Yeah. The Word of God. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I tell you, the Word of God yeah. is what strengthens me. Yeah. The Word of God is what encourages yeah. me to go on. And the Word of God is what it took, my friend, yeah. to get into my heart. Yeah. And brother, and show me where I was at. Yeah. And show me I was lost. Show me I was on my way to hell. Yeah. Bro, that's what it took tonight. That's right. Amen. And whether we want to realize it or not today, uh, your lost people, that's what it's going to take. Yeah. It's got to have, we've got to have that word. Yeah. Oh, we've got to have that meat tonight. Yeah. Oh, I think many times about that man, uh, that Ethiopian eunuch, and how sad that is. Uh, if you'll read that scripture, brother, he had went to Jerusalem uh, to yeah. worship. Yeah. He had went to the house of God, uh, came back, and I often wonder if he wasn't reading uh, the scripture that the preacher read that morning. I've often thought about that. Yeah. Still didn't know 
heads from tails. Amen. All he know that he was lost. Yeah. He said it's a day of trouble, a rebuke, and a blasphemy. Children come to the birth. Yeah. There's not strength. There's not strength to bring forth. Right. I'm gonna tell you something, church. When we don't have strength, we're not gonna see people right. saved. Right. Right. When and I'm gonna go a little farther. Right. Verse number, chapter number 66 and verse 8. He said, I'm going to read that again. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be uh, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon. Yeah. Listen to this. For yeah. as soon. Yeah. For as soon. Yeah. For as soon. Immediately. That's what that word means. Immediately. Yeah. Uh, for as soon as Zion. Who is Zion today? Uh, what is Zion today? Yeah. Uh, but it's not a some country a land over in a foreign country. Yeah. Uh, but it's the church yeah. of the living God. Yeah. Then I yeah. preach the other night. Uh, that is the Israel of God tonight. Yeah. And he yeah. said as soon as uh, Zion travailed. Uh, she brought forth her children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we, uh, I believe it's time tonight that the church gets some labor pains. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Brother, I came for a woman and a birth a child. She has to have uh, something. She has to go into labor. Uh, she, her water has to break. And then she goes into some labor. And sometimes it's painful. But sometimes it's long. And sometimes it's hard. But without that labor, there'll be no birth. Right. And that's what he's talking about. Without labor, there'll be no birth. And I'll tell you, we've got a church world today and that would rather just sit down. Amen. God help me just a little while. Amen. We've got a church today and they want to sit down like this right here and they will say, you do it, you do it, or you do it. I don't want to do my part. I don't want to pray for it. I don't want to take it to Jesus. If I can get them, pass it off to somebody else. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what. I thought about poor men in the Bible. And brother, that's what we needed at the house of God. These four men, they had a friend that was sick of the policy. Brother, they had a friend that needed help. I want you to I want you to ask yourself right now. I want you to I want you to ask yourself. Do I know somebody? that needs to be saved. I'm going to raise my hand. I know people that needs to be saved. I know people that needs this man Jesus. And I'll tell you, they had a man like that. And they and I'm just using my word. You can read it yourself. It's in Mark chapter 2. And they, and they reason with himself. If we can get this man to Jesus, he can be made whole. He's down at Capernaum. He's having a cottage prayer meeting. Let's go down there. Let's get him to Jesus. Yeah. When they got down there, they couldn't open the doors. It was so full they couldn't open them. I picture them looking through the windows. They couldn't get through the windows. Uh, brother, I'll tell you what a lot of us would have done. We'd have said, well, we'll catch you next time. We'll catch you next time. That wasn't good enough for them. Why? They was in labor. Yeah. Amen. They yeah. was in travail. Yeah. And they yeah. seen that man needed help. And there was only one way to get him the help. Yeah. Hey. I'll tell you. Hey, I want you to think. Every hand went up a while ago. Hey. And God knows each hand. Yeah. And he knows each soul that man's represented. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, God help me just a minute. Hey. <laughs> Each hand that went up represented somebody. Amen. Let's not worry about getting them to hear certain preachers. Amen. Let's not worry about getting them some kind of singing. Amen. Let's not worry about asking them to join the church. Amen. Let's not worry about taking them down here and baptizing them. Amen. Let's not worry about having them sign a card. Amen. Let's not worry about them saying, come and repeat after me and ask the Lord to forgive you by saying these words. Uh, let's not worry about that. Uh, let's do like these men did. And let's get up on the roof and tear it up and get him to Jesus today. And Jesus is the only one that's going to save him, my friend. I can't save him, Billy. You can't can't save them. Wayne, you can't save them. Uh, Jeff, you can't save them. But Jesus, Jesus, Jesus can save them. Amen. 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 We 
got to go with the layer. Brother, I'll tell you. We, I pray. I've said it. I've got, went around the altars, request some prayer. I said, Lord, or pray to the Lord that the Lord would save this man. Pray and ask God to do this to him or do that to him. I'm going to tell you, when we do that, we're not late. Amen. I, I'm just going to be playing. I, I, when I just come up to you and I say, Brother, pray for uh, Jason Norwood. I've requested prayer for him uh, time and time again. But when I say, just pray for him, and I go on about my way, I'm not really in labor. There's pain comes from labor. Brother, I'll tell you what. When we get to where we can pray a little longer and we get to where we can cry a little more over and we get to, uh, uh, to where we can stay up a little later at night uh, when we get to where we can back away from the table and fast and really pray and really seek God and really be there and really show them the love they need. Uh, brother, that's love. Amen. And that's when we start getting into travail. Amen. Amen. Brother, it'll work. Yeah, you say, preacher, I don't, it's that simple, church. Amen. You want to see people saved? Uh, don't leave it up to the preacher. Don't leave it up to the deacons. Don't leave it up uh, to a Sunday school teacher. Uh, do your part. Amen. 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 Ain't no strength. Amen. There ain't no labor. Yeah. I'll tell you, I thought about this today. So I'll tell you, we, the way the Spirit of God was, uh, so it still is. I'll tell you what, the way things was going when we started this morning, I thought, Lord, there ain't no way I can preach what you've laid on my heart. Amen. It's going to get stout. Yeah, which I'm going to tell you, brother, I can't preach it no stouter and then God's wrote it down. Amen. I can't preach it no stouter and then the Spirit of God gives it, brother. But I'll tell you what, if, I, if we want to see our people saved, uh, we better take heed uh, to the Word of God. Amen. 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 I'll tell you, many of us tonight, the world can't tell a bit of difference in the preacher and the drunk. Amen. Hey, the world can't tell a bit of difference in the deacon or the Sunday school teacher or the church member and then they can't anybody else out in the world. Why is that preacher? Because we've got members at the house of God and it's living like they do. You know what Paul said? Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the yeah. mercies of God, yeah. and that you present your yeah. bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord, of which is your reasonable servant. Yeah. In verse number two, he said, Be not conformed to this world, yeah. but be you transformed and by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. In other words, brother, we're not to be like the world, yeah. and we're to come out of the world yeah. and be a separate people. Yeah. 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 You don't think that'll work? Brother, it'll work. Hey, it'll, it'll work. work. It'll work. Sir. How many times have I heard and you have to? If that man's going to heaven, I ain't got nothing to worry about. Uh -huh. You ever heard that? Yeah. 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 Well, if that man's a preacher, I'm an astronaut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that? Right. I've heard that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, brother, that's because uh, when we get outside the house of God, we live like the world. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm bound to determine to believe that it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck. And, brother, it's a duck tonight. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. That's our problem. Uh, we've tried to bring the world into the house of God, and, and our people can't tell any difference yeah. anymore. Amen. But he said to come out from among the world. Yeah. Be a separate people. Yeah. Brother, I'll tell you, if you want to make a difference, and I've said this many, many times, our lost people, sometimes the only Bible they'll ever read, right. sometimes the right. only church they'll ever see yeah. is what they see from you and me. Yeah. Uh, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress, uh, the way we act, uh, brother, I'll tell you, that will make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. Yeah. Me and a man was talking yesterday, day before yesterday morning, and we were talking about how the things have changed. Uh, when we first, when I first got in church, uh, I guess it's about 1994, 95, summers in there when I first got uh, right with the Lord. Uh, brother, but, but even before that, when I was growing up and I was in all kind of meanness and everything uh, that I wasn't supposed to, when somebody, I, I seen somebody that went to the house of God, I would respect them. Yeah. There was a respect there. Yeah. 
Yeah. There was a respect for the house of God. Yeah. Right. Respect for the people. Well, you got it, Lord, do we? Amen. Why don't we, preacher? Because it's what we're doing when we're out there. Yeah. When we're amongst. You know, Paul. Paul was one of the, the stoutest preachers I've ever heard. I've ever read about. And brother, he didn't cut no corners for anybody. And he, the Bible said it's in the you can read it in the book of Galatians. He said, Oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Yeah. He goes on into that book and he tells who hath bewitched him. He tells what had happened to it. And brother, he withstood Peter uh, to the face over it. He didn't go behind his back, uh, but brother, he stood there and he told him just like it was. He said, now, and I'm using my word. He said, Peter, uh, when you're with the Jews, you're acting like the Jews. Yeah. Uh, when you're with the Gentiles, you're acting like the Gentiles. Yeah. And he said, you can't do that. And that's the same way it is with us, brother. Uh, we can't act like the world and expect them to come and be part of the church. Amen. Amen. We can't expect to birth them in the name of God if yeah. we're playing with the same sins they are. Harvest is past. Summer's ended. And we're not saved. Brother, we need to get the strength. We need to get that strength back. Right here is where we're going to get it. Right. In the Word of God. We're going to have to start get going into them labor pains. Yeah. Amen. If we're going to have, you're going to have to do it. If you want to see your people saved, yeah. and I've said it over here, I heard somebody else say it not long ago too, it ain't just me and my three that matters. Amen. Amen. Uh, brother, we ought to be trying to get the whole world uh, saved tonight. That's what Jesus uh, told us to do. He said, go into all the world and yes. preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to see your people saved. I want to see your people blessed. I'm going to tell this. I was a few weeks ago. Oh, why not love you? Now I want to thank you. That's a few weeks ago. We had service. We stood in white and stayed here probably 10 until 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. We just stand up there talking. We was a crying, we was shouting, we was preaching a little bit to one another. Now we got to talking about our families. He got to tell me about his kids. And I got to tell him about my kids. And they, I told him, I said, I'm going to pray for your children. He said, brother, I'm going to pray for your kids. We're going to pray for each other's kids. And I'll tell you, it wasn't two weeks uh, later. And I want to thank you for that. Wayne, I believe you was really praying. And I Very believe you were sincere. Uh, but brother, two weeks later, we were sitting in church and I just got up to preach. And my youngest son jumped up from the back and he hit that altar. And he started getting ready. He was shouting on the altar of God. He made things right. Made, uh, brother, and I'll tell you, you can see a difference in him. And about 30 minutes later, we was going out of the church. And fixing to go out and I looked back. And two of my daughters was coming and they was hitting that altar. Uh, brother, I had three of them uh, come to the Lord that day. And brother, I want to thank you for having a little bit of life. That's what it takes. That's what it takes, brother. It ain't about me and my three. Amen. Hey, Brian, you don't have to know who Jeff raised his hand for tonight. And it won't hurt you a bit to pray for his request. Amen. Jeff, it won't hurt you a bit to pray for his. Amen. Brother, like you said a while ago, where two or three yeah. are gathered together in his name, the brother, the Lord of Lords, Amen. and the King of Kings, my Jesus will be in the midst. It's time that we take up our cross Amen. and follow him. I want to see your people say in church. Amen. I want to see my people say. I've asked people to pray for them three men for two years, a little over two years now, I guess. And, and brother, I'll tell you, I'm just going to be playing with Rocky Ball tonight. This is right here, I'm looking right in the mirror and I'm saying it to me. 
Uh, brother, it's time that I start uh, having labor pains for these men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I want to see them saved, I'm going to have to do my part yeah. instead of saying, hey, uh, Wayne, pray for that man for me. Vernon, uh, pray for this man for me. Yeah. It's time for me to get serious with God. Yeah. That man, uh, brother, they had the man with four, and I'm going to close as soon as the Lord lets me tonight. Yeah. I don't care if I preach on midnight yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, but brother, I'll tell you, when they got up there, uh, they got up on the roof, they tore it back, yeah. and laid him down at the feet of Jesus. Uh, brother, the Bible said uh, that Jesus said, uh, hey, listen to this, Jesus yeah. said, uh, they caused a their pain. Yeah. It's, uh, his sins yeah. are forgiven, brother. Yeah. They had a desire yeah. to yeah. give yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And I believe every church member here yeah. Needs to be out inviting people to come to church every week. That's good. But you want they need something more than church. They need Jesus. I heard a message. Why? Give me a CD. Roy Ball preaching. I guess it's back in the seventies. I guess it's a college prayer meeting, and I like what Roy said. I've said it a hundred times myself. But I don't know, it just it just struck something with me when I heard Roy say it. It's talking to somebody and he'd ask him if he'd ever been saved. Man told him, said, Why, well, yeah, prayer, I go down here to a such and such Baptist church in Spirit. Yeah. He said, That ain't what I asked. He said, My old preacher so and so baptized me. Yeah. He said, That ain't what I asked you. He asked him another, he's told him another thing. He said, I'm not asking you uh, where you go to church. I'm not asking you uh, if you've yeah. been baptized. I'm not asking you uh, what kind of preaching you've heard in your life. I'm asking you, right. have you been born again? Amen. That's what matters. Amen. 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 We're going to have to go into the Today, it breaks my heart when I see and I'll tell you, you preachers know what I'm talking about. When you give an altar call, and you can see them knuckles turning white, gripping them benches, and they walk right out just as lost as they come in. That breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. I'll tell you, and it tells me there's something wrong. I've always said, Lord, is it me? Is it me? I don't want to hinder anybody. And right here's a good place to say this. When that altar call's given, listen to me now. When that altar call's given, God's people are to give it reverence. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That is a war time. That's a time of battle. And I'll, I'll tell you what I told somebody, and I've said this uh, many, many times. You don't have to come to this altar to get saved. No. You can get saved back there. Uh, you can get saved out the, down the road, anywhere uh, that the Spirit of God deals with somebody. Yeah. Uh, they can get saved. But I'll tell you, uh, when people come, yeah. uh, it's for a reason tonight. Yeah. Uh, because there's a battle uh, going on over yeah. a soul. Uh, the devil is fighting yeah. uh, at that particular time more than he has the whole service. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not trying to give the devil any props tonight. But there's a battle going on. Yeah. And, and so many times I was in a revival uh, last year and, and just as soon, and I'll tell you this bothers me, Amen. just as soon as the preacher would say, that's the message, let's stand and sing, brother, they'd start getting their coats and they'd uh, start gathering their stuff, getting their pocketbook, and before the altar call was given, uh, they was dressed and ready to go out. Yeah. Had their winter coats on, ready to go out. Yeah. The farthest thing from their mind. That ought to be the most serious time Amen. in church. As a preacher, told Dwight, I'm closing after this. I told Dwight one time. I told this. I pastored five different churches. And I've said told every song leader that I've ever had in church this like this story. And I told Dwight this before he passed away, how much this meant to me. There's a revival right here. The preacher was preaching, and he got about halfway through. And you all know how Dwight would do. He'd get that song book and he'd start praying, he'd start looking for what the Lord wanted him to sign. And 
that preacher after service, he went to him and he said, I don't believe you ought to be flipping through that songbook while I'm up preaching. He said, that's disrespectful to me. And Dwight told him, he said, brother, he said, I, I, I respect what you're saying. He said, but that's my job in this church. I'm the song leader of this church. That is the most important part in this service tonight is when you're, when that altar call is given, I want to be in tune with God. Amen. I want to be in a place to where I'm singing the right song. I'm right. singing in the right spirit because uh, that might be uh, what pulls at that man's heart or that woman's heart and gets them on an altar. Uh, brother, I'll tell you what, uh, not only that, but every child of God, uh, when that time comes, needs to be prayed. Amen. 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 I don't know why the Lord sent this message tonight like this. And I'm not going to question him. And I'm not going to take one word of it back. And I'm not going to apologize for it. Because I believe with all my heart tonight it comes to the Lord. Everybody's saying, Try and get a song.